Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today's video is about building one of the most useful things that any shop or school could have, a downdraft cutting table for using a plasma cutter, cutting torch, or even for welding and grinding. It's going to hook up to a fume extractor with a little special attachment, get a lot of downdraft uh, action going so you don't have to breathe that smoke. Any technical college, this would be a great project for your students. I think you could probably get permission to, to do it, even if it mean, uh, means extra money in the budget, because it is a safety item. Keep that shop safer, less fumes to breathe. This video is sponsored by Strong Hand Tools, and today we're going to be using the Build Pro Table, the three axis uh, clamp for fabricating up the backbone of this thing, as well as a couple little small little things called V pads with magnets on them to help me hold this uh, upside down fume extractor uh, vent hood together while I tack it. So the three axis clamp here is, uh, is, is, is for welding and framing up parts like this. It's not really designed to be used by the home hobbyist or uh, you know weekend warrior. This is a serious tool. This is for people that recognize value in uh, you know labor and time savings because it's not a cheap tool. This is not a, f a five dollar tool. It's, it costs a few hundred dollars for the one for the model that I'm using here. But it's heavy duty. It's accurate. It's precision machined, and you can see it really helps the stuff like this go together really quickly. This, I'm framing up a, a, a box here. It's going to be the, uh, the the main framework for this for this uh, cutting table, and uh, I've got square cut ends. I didn't miter anything, uh, partly because the saw angle cutter is frozen shut, but also partly because it is part of the design here, I'm going to put some pipe up in some of these open ends on the top to, uh, to make a, a telescoping handle that holds parts, uh, holds light angle iron or whatnot for plasma cutting. You can see a little close up here, the, the access ports, once you get everything locked in, there's quick release buttons and it uh, swings out of the way. There's access ports for tack welding and even welding the whole thing out if you want to while it's in the clamp, but I don't usually do that. I usually just get plenty of tacks on it and uh, move on to the next joint. That way if I make a mistake I can you know cut something loose or break something loose without having to redo the whole thing which I, I make lots of mistakes. Just a really easy way to clamp things up get things tacked up quickly. And this this part here went you know it doesn't take forever to frame something like this up just with a framing square and, and get a tack weld and bump it around and all that but it seriously took maybe you know 10 minutes to put this whole thing together using using this clamp so it's it's really for shops that do a lot of framing the payback will happen pretty quick and it's it put that put this thing together accurately enough that once I got half of it put together with the legs on it all I had to do is lay it on the other the other part and it didn't I didn't even have to use the clamp because it was so true and, and plumb and everything just a time saver big time saver all right now I got really lucky on the uh, the little upside down vent hood just so happen these little bronze looking uh, they're, they're threaded holes that are designed actually to be go underneath the table and provide a threaded uh, hold down for any in any place on the table through those holes but I got really lucky and just happened to the bolt hole pattern uh, exactly match the dimension of that upside down vent hood there so what I'm doing here is I'm I'm drawing a seven inch square dead center of that other pattern this is roughly uh, 27 inches on the outside and I'm making that seven inch square. That's how big I want my hole to be. And that's roughly the same surface area as the uh, eight inch uh, round uh, vent, vent on the fume extractor. And that corner there, I'm, I'm using this precision uh, 90 degree riser to get my point up in the air of where I want that corner to be on the vent hood. And I'm just using a piece of cardboard to transfer that point on there. And then I'm gonna draw a straight line and that's my angle. So then with a, with a little bit more work, you know, a little measuring, a little crude, uh, you know, just on the cardboard there, I want to get an idea that this thing's going to work before I start cutting up these pieces. So I get my straight lines and my 7 inch uh, line up top there, get a good straight line on there and then transfer the, uh, the other point 7 inches away from the, the one I marked and then come down to the corner and there I've got pretty much the piece that I'm going to cut four of to make up that funnel, vent hood, whatever we want to call it. And laying it up there, I got a pretty good idea that laying four of them up there leaned in like that is going to work out just fine. So 
I'm using 16 gauge hot rolled steel. I rolled a little portable welding table outside because I'm plasma cutting. I don't want to sweep that stuff up. That's just part of the reason I want that table so I can lay something like this on it and cut it and suck all the smoke out. But I don't have it made yet, so I'm pulling it outside to get rid of those fumes. I don't have a shear. I'm not a sheet metal shop, just a kind of a job shop, so I don't have a shear yet. So a plasma cutter is like the next best thing sometimes. It does require a little cleanup, but not much. So you can make a nice straight cut without any warping on sheet metal like that just by using a long straight edge. I'm using a piece of uh, aluminum angle here, and I figured out that about 5 sixteenths away is right for this Miller tip. I'm using a Miller Spectrum 625 Extreme Plasma Cutter. And I've got it set at max amps just so I can motor on as quickly as possible and using a drag tip. But as you can see, just clamping these, uh, clamping a straight edge, you can cut 16 gauge about it just off, you know, not, not as quickly as you can drag the torch, but darn near. And it cuts through it really nicely, leaving a good finish with hardly any cleanup. In fact, for this job, I'm not going to clean it up hardly at all. I'm just going to knock the, the rough slag off on it. And I'm going to use these little V-pad, magnetic V-pads here to help me hold this thing together. And you'll see these little stops. They're, again, they're not designed for this. They don't, they, they're, they're just got little magnets in them. Uh, but for what I'm doing today, it's just a really, just happened to work out just a really quick way for me to set this thing up. And I'm really finding that I get lucky a lot like this with this table because there's so many hole patterns and so many variations of things that you can do to get a job done. Sometimes you make your own luck. But you see, I just popped that little magnet on there and it lets me hold it. It gives me like a third hand. It looks like it's going to go together pretty well. Would have been a lot more accurate if I had a shear. Could have really been accurate and got within, you know, like a 30 second on the cuts. But the plasma cutter, along with being able to fill a little gap with the MIG welder, along with the fact that this thing is just a funnel and uh, it's going to look, it's going to have all kinds of dross and spatter stuck to it in a, a week after I put it into use. So uh, I'm not really uh, overly concerned with being perfectly accurate. Just want it, just want it to look good and and uh, and fit and, and and be able to weld it in there. So, we get it all tacked up, bunch and bunch of tacks on it. You need to probably attack every three inches or so on something like this, roughly, at least every five inches. And then I'm going to use a little technique called backstep welding, and I'm going to weld everything downhill. 16 gauge, you definitely want to weld it downhill. Backstep welding means I'm going to weld about three or four inches and then I'm going to stop and then I'm going to go ahead of that and then weld another three tying into the previous weld and that kind of limits distortion on something like this. You can see we've got some gaps and some slag a little bit. You might even see a little porosity here and there crop up. But um, again, this is going to really look bad with all that dross on it in, in about a week. So I'm really, really not worried about it really just need to get this part done. There you go. There's some porosity from not cleaning up the, uh, the slag quite good enough. But backstep welding, limit, limited to distortion. Mostly it's a full penetration weld there. And let's see if it fits. And it does. There's a little daylight up in there, but that's a lot easier than trying to beat it in. So I'm going to use a piece of uh, a flat bar. You can see trimmed around here, and that's the view from the top. And that's going to direct all the sparks and dross and everything down into that sliding tray. It will dump when it, uh, when it gets about halfway full. And uh, that's part one. There's going to be several parts to this video. I'm going to show all the mistakes and uh, things I wish I'd have done differently. And uh, so stay tuned. And uh, thanks for watching. WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.